Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're going to be looking at another world deck. I've just come back from my holiday, it's been very relaxing and great, but now it's time to turn back to worlds. And today we're going to have a look at Gardevoir Gallade, a deck that was last year the world's winning deck as just the best archetype in the format. Uh, and now we're going to see a new rendition of this deck. Uh, with quite a few different counts and a different look to this deck because now it fits into the category of anti-meta where we're trying to use Gallade to one hit KO all the Zoroarks in the world and Gardevoir to one hit KO all the Rayquazas in the world and hope that that is going to be enough to make it a powerful archetype in the world's metagame as this deck has received a bit of hype. There's a few people playing this at Cups alongside Zoroark and straight Gardevoir and today I'm going to be showing you the straight build which I think is the safest possible for a day one world's meta play, which is where I'm headed. So let's have a look at this. Uh, the uh, concept of Gardevoir has actually changed quite a bit. Um, it used to be that you build up your big guardies, you use your max potions like Broken Voir did uh, to build up and get multiple secret springers on the board. And then you just get into a state where one guardie takes four prizes by just having a lot of energy on it. Thanks to a bunch of secret springs and attachments and choice band and all that good stuff. Now it's very much different. Now we're just hoping to hit the right matchups, really. Gallade can one hit KO Zoroark, and it's very awkward for them to respond. And Gardevoir, as I said, very good for Rayquaza because they need a lot of energy themselves, and Gardevoir really doesn't need much to respond on it. So rather than trying to build up a bunch of Gardevoirs, now we're more interested in getting lots of Gallades onto the board, which is actually a much better thing for us because Gallade has Premonition, which really helps the deck tick in general a lot better. So let's have a look at our Pokemon count. Now it's a 4-2-3-2 line of the Gallade and Gardevoir. So we're playing the Psychic, Rolts and Curliers. This has Smack, which does 20 for a DC, which is reasonable to note because with a Choice Band you can actually do 100 to certain things uh, that are weak to Psychic. And Curlier has this Quick Turn Attack, which does 30, 50 coins for each head. So once again, against Psychic stuff, I mean, you, you hit one heads with a Choice Band, you can actually KO Mew EXs, which is quite funny, so bear that in mind. But the main reason we're playing the Psychic stuff is because we're adding two Mysterious Treasure into the list. Mysterious Treasure is a really good card in this deck because it gives us additional discards to allow Premonition to work with Oranguru, as well as getting just more Curliers and Rolts on the board. So if we miss Bridget, or in addition to Bridget, we can gather these Rolts and Curliers throughout the game because, of course, um, we need them uh, in order to get into our Stage 2s. So... That's why we're going for the Psychic Lines. We are playing three of this Gallade. I love the card. I think it's awesome. 150 hit, uh, hit points is really a big pain to deal with for a lot of decks. That Fighting Typing, obviously fantastic. Premonition, a great ability, letting us look at the top five cards, rearrange them how we like, and we're going to use cards like Oranguru and even Professor Kukui to try and get those specific cards in order to meet combos to make one-hit KOs, which is really big. We're looking for DCEs here, looking for Guzmas, all that good stuff. So it can even get us into more rare candy pieces. So very important um, ability overall for helping the deck smooth its way through the game, which is awesome. Sensitive Blade is the attack, which does 60 base. If you play the supporter from your hand during this turn, 70 more damage. So 130, obviously enough to do with Zoroarks with a choice band. Uh, we do go up to 160, and we do play Diancy Prism Star in here as well to hit 180. Uh, that's good for Tapu Leles and such, so do bear that in mind. Sensitive Blade isn't just a Zoroark killer, it's also very good for dealing with Tapu Lele, so that's really important to note. So, Glade, pretty much our main attacker in a lot of matchups. Also very good for dealing with things like Baby Buzzwall, so he's going to be up and center against the Buzzrock decks. You may notice that I'm not playing anything like Mew EX or anything like that. I found that because we're a stage 2 deck anyway, we normally go behind against Buzzrock, right? Because they're just eating up our Volpixes, Rolts, even our Angaroos. So us playing a Mew EX just gets us further behind even quicker. So it's way better for us to try and stabilize a Gallade. That can munch through a couple of uh, Rockruffs, Remoraids, Baby Buzzwalls, that sort of thing. The emphasis really is on us hitting turn 2 Rare Candy, otherwise it's going to be a very hard matchup. But Gallade is actually quite good against Buzzrock in general, so... Um, that's what we're going to try and do. We're going to try and be more non exe against Buzzrock players um, rather than going for how we've seen with old Guardi try and, once again, build up a big Guardi that can deal with all their stuff because that doesn't matter anymore because they're all non-GXs other than the Lycanroc that can just sweep you anyway. So way better for us to be Gallade-heavy against the Buzzrock players 
and make them keep going through 150 hit point non-GXs, which is the best thing that we can do, really. So that's why we're not playing Mew EX or Mewtwo or anything like that, although Mewtwo is still a reasonable card for this deck. Um, I think Gallade itself is going to be our answer to Buzzrock in general, hoping that the Lycanroc can't get its value from its GX attack because it'll only ever take the one prize, and we can just recycle these Gallades as best as possible. Bear in mind, that's probably our hardest matchup, so that's something to note. Um, from there, two Gardevoir GX. Only two copies, because as I've said a bunch of times now, we're not trying to just secret spring our way into infinite force death. We're just using this for Rayquaza, which has popped up and is a very powerful deck. Looking at worlds, 230 hit points for this uh, Pokemon is very, very good. Stage 2 again, weakness to, fight, uh, to metal isn't a big problem. Resistance to dark is very good, especially because a lot of Zoroark players, especially Zoro Lock, they are not playing Choice Band, so Gardevoir can sometimes have to be forced to be 3 hit, which is amazing for us. It really is a tanky mon in those sorts of Zoroark matchups. Twilight GX gives us a lot of help against Zoro Garb as well, so Gardevoir is an amazing card also in the Zoroark matchups. So this is really awesome, shuffling back in those Field Blowers, item cards in general to make uh, Garbodor's Trash Launch do a lot less damage and getting back things like Guzmas and other supporters just for consistency is going to be fantastic for us. So Twilight is the GX attack, which is very good against the lock archetypes for getting back Guzmas and Floatstone so they can't stall us out, as well as energy cards, of course, uh, and reducing all that Garbodor damage, which is, you know, the initial reason why people were so hyped about the Guard of War in the first place, and uh, it still serves that purpose. And then Infinite Force for that one energy can bop Rayquazas, and it can just, in general matchups, eventually build up to big damage, but oftentimes we look to two-hit her with this card unless we're up against Rayquaza. So a lot less crazy than it used to be, but still serves very important tech roles in this deck, which is very interesting to see how this card has adapted to the new format. So from there, we're going to play two copies of Lele, of course. Wonder Tag is awesome. Energy Drive is awesome as well. Uh, we do have the extra copies of Mysterious Treasure. So we have four Ultra Ball, two Lele, two Treasure, and two Bridgets. That's a decent number of odds to try and hit those early Bridgets to get us rolling in the game. So that's very important to note. And Energy Drive, you know, we do play DCs, so it's something to keep in mind. From there, we're playing two Oranguru. Now, Guardi has played Octillery in the past. I think Octillery is a risk um, just because of the amount of counter catches in Zoroark, they can deal with your artillery and then you can crumble a lot easier. Here, by playing two copies of Ranguru and two copies of Rescue Stretcher, makes us a lot safer against Delinquent and just in general, them Guzma KOing your draw engine and then us collapsing on ourselves. Now we have a lot of outs to keep getting back into our Instruct if they're trying to get around you that way. So I think it's a lot safer than it would be in other formats. Also, uh, it gives us physically more space for more supporter cards, which is also helpful against Garbodor itself. Whereas if we played the Octillery, that's, you know, three or four slots. Or if you want to be greedy, play the 1-1 one, one count instead of the Guru. That's super greedy, by the way. Um, you're way worse against Garbodor. And Garbodor will be present in Day 1 of Worlds. Like, that's guaranteed. Zoragarb is a very good deck right now. So playing the Guru and the two Stretcher, I think, just makes us way safer against the Zoroark stuff. And that's really all we need to care about. And in general, it gets going a lot quicker than the Octillery, so we're a lot less fragile in the early game, in my opinion. As long as we can draw into Ultra Balls and Mysterious Treasures, we can usually lower our hand size nicely enough to get Instructing. Especially if it goes alongside Premonition, it's just going to go really well for you. So I think it's a lot safer than playing Octillery at this moment in time. Plus, it's my favourite card, so obviously it's going to be in this list. From there, the one Diancy Prism Star. Princess's Cheers gives us that extra buff of damage on the Gallade, which I've already mentioned, to reach Tapu Lele's for knockouts. Very nice for closing out games. And we are going to play the one-off copy of Beacon. Uh, we do still play nine copies of energy cards in this deck, so we can retreat into it quite quickly, as well as two Float Stones. So we can still uh, force this into the active, force the opponent to either Guzma up your Roltzes, or end you away. Lots of aggressive decks like Rayquaza and Buzzrock are playing like two copies or less. So that can be really nice for getting us into our stage two stuff. And we're forcing awkward plays out of Zorart players and getting ourselves out of Delinquent range, which is also something to bear in mind because Delinquent is everywhere and it's a real pain. So uh, Alone and Volpix still helpful. I mean, I don't use it a huge amount. Uh, it's great when you go second, not so good when you go first. But hey, if you've gone first, you're already happy. So we'll take that. Onto the items now, I've tried to streamline it a lot, uh, and this is where the biggest sort of 
controversial thing comes in where we just play one copy of Max Potion. Now, Broken Voir has once played four copies. I never liked playing four. I would always trim lower and lower. And in this case, I've gone for a heavy Skylar engine. So just by playing one copy of Max Potion, we have a lot of outs to find it because we play Skylar anyway. So I'm choosing to play a supporter card in higher outs than the Max Potion, but you can go and increase your max potion count if you think it's valid enough. This card is very potent in this deck. It can force, you know, if people are trying to two hit KO your Glade with like a Lele in the active, many Zorak players will try this. They'll go for energy drive, hope that you don't have Guzma and stuff like that um, to soften up the Glade. So if you can max potion, reattach, especially now that we have Diancy, we can one shot that Lele or hit Guzma. Either way is great for you. Um, Max Potion is just really good, and when your Guardi's being attacked as well, you can Max Potion, have your Twilight GX turn, all that good stuff. So, it is a very powerful card. As I've said, it's been in high counts before. It's too good to be cut all together, but I think just one is normally enough, because we can Twilight it back in if it's important, against things like Spread Archetypes and stuff like that, or just if you're in a matchup where you can tank. But I prefer the consistency of Skylar for getting us into Rare Candies in the first place, and Ultra Balls and stuff like that, so... Just playing one copy, it's a great card, but I don't have space for many more because I'm so paranoid about stage 2 nonsense. So, from there, gonna play two copies of Blower. I think two is fine, obviously Parallel's a problem, obviously Garbodor's a problem. Um, but at the same time, we have Twilight GX, and in those matchups, we'll be doing that. So, I think two is okay. You can go to three if you're super paranoid uh, about the Toxin and stuff like that, but I think the recycle of Gardevoir is what we're gonna try and aim towards. We're going to play two copies of Rescue Stretcher. I love immediately grabbing your Stage 2 stuff that you've lost or immediately grabbing Guru that's been paralleled away, stuff like that. Um, this is going to be really important. So I like the immediacy of your Rescue Stretcher. And as I said, the Guardi doesn't need to be huge in this map, in this deck. So you don't need Super Rod as much as Stretcher. So I like having two copies to try and swarm your board of those Stage 2s and keep building up every turn your Roltzers and Curliers and so on. Uh, but I think the Super Rod's not necessary, and we can Twilight these back in as well if we really need to, so it's good recovery for our most important attackers, because this is all we have, really, alongside Lele. Then the four ofs, we're going to play four Rare Candy for Ultra Ball, obviously. Ultra Ball amazing for searching things out in the first place, but also lowering that hand size for Instruct uh, and, prom and uh, Premonition combo, and Rare Candy, obviously, very important. The support account I've tinkered around with a lot. Um, I've actually gone down a heavy Skylar route in this deck. I think Skylar's really important, so let's look at the one-offs first of all. One copy of Kikui, uh, alongside the Diancy, it can increase that 180 into a big one-hit KO, uh, which is really nice for you. Um, if you have the Diancy, Choice Band, Gallade, uh, all that going all together, the Kikui can then reach, you know, Buzzwall GXs and stuff like that, so that's really important for you. Um, it can also deal with uh, like great quasars and stuff, so that's really good. Um, we're going to play one copy of Sycamore. I don't like discarding things in a stage 2 deck, even though we have Twilight. Uh, you don't want to be forced to Twilight every game. I prefer keeping the pieces of Guardian Gallade and stuff like that, but it's still some power draw if we really need it. So we are going to have increased counts of uh, Cynthia, which we're going to play two of. This was once a four of, then I trimmed it to three, then I trimmed it to two as I kept increasing the Skylar count because I just found it so powerful. Uh, two copies of Bridget, I've already said how many outs we have alongside these balls. Uh, then we're going to play the three of of the important stuff, the Guzmas, the Ends, and the three Skylar, which is the star of the show. Absolutely awesome for getting you candy stage two, which is really to keep up in this meta, like so crucial. We've pretty much become a Vika Budu shell, if you look at it. We're playing these Orangaroos, we're playing high stage 2 count, and these are so important that we just really need to get them. So Skylar being invested into this deck, because we have the Guru that's so easy to search out instead of Octillery, it means that essentially we try and go all in on Skylar, get that stage 2 on board, and just hope that Premonition can get us the rest of the pieces that we need that turn, namely DC a lot of the time. So... Um, that's really the standpoint we're going for with this list. Skylar is awesome, fishes out our max potion, fishes out those uh, field blowers as well, which is a really big deal, obviously, for Garbodor. So, although it is just two copies of Blower, we have lots of outs to find them, which is very good for us. And, and of course, the comeback card when we are a stage two deck, very important. And it also gives us really high count of supporters uh, for Glade to proc its sensitive blade, of course. So that's always something to keep in the back of your mind as well. From there, two copies of Choice Band and two Floatstones. I don't think Choice Band is 
like the most important card if you're only facing Rayquazas and Zoroarks. It's not even that good against Buzzrock, in all honesty. Uh, but it does make your Guardia a bit more threatening against full-on Buzzwall GXs. Um, but it's really those sort of fringe matchups where you need this extra damage. The Choice Band means that you can KO Lele's, as I said, with Gallade. And it's just for the more fringe stuff, so that you can just bop things that will come up, because otherwise Gallade is stuck in the two-shot heaven, and uh, so is Gardevoir a lot of the time when we only play two copies. Um, we can't really spring everything out of nowhere, especially with the amount of fair energy that we play. Two Floatstone, pretty standard, really. Chuck it on your Gurus, chuck it on your Diancies, and pivot throughout the game, which is really cool for your Guzmas. From there, we're going to play nine energy cards. Really low for Gardevoir. Uh, I've gone down to as low as eight before, but I think nine is fairly sweet. Uh, if you really want to have a, a tiny bit of extra consistency, you could cut the ninth energy for a third blower or a third Cynthia or a second max potion. Play around with those counts if you really want to. Um, but I think nine is fairly fine. Uh, it gives you good access to them when you are needing to Gardevoir. It also gives us nice retreat odds for your Alolan Vulpix and stuff like that. So that's something to note. Uh, and just get free attachments here and there. You can even spring attach onto your Gallades if you're feeling like you can miss. Or like if you just can't access your DCs themselves. So that's something to bear in mind. So I think 9 is fine. DC, of course, the most vital uh, for these Gallades, Lele's, and even for just buffing the Gardevoir output when we don't have many secret springs to use each turn. So these are very vital cards. That's oftentimes what you're going to Twilight G GX back in. All those DCs that you've lost and then extra pieces that are going to be helpful for you. That's pretty much uh, the Twilight GX in a nutshell. So yeah, that is going to be the list. And uh, let's have a look at a few cards that we could be playing that we're choosing not to. I've already mentioned Mew, but we could also be playing the Mew 2. I know that a few successful NAIC guard of our list we're playing I think one or two copies of this card to improve your buzz rock matchup I think it's very reasonable um, how I said that you want to be as non gx -y as possible is important of course but if this uh, buzz world GX does come out with B string turns the glade gets knocked out and you don't have a response that can be really awkward for you so the Mewtwo just being a check to that could be important so if you're expecting more buzz rock than I am um, you can expect to include this card as a very important one of. Another card that you could consider is going to be Mr. Mime uh, for that bench barrier. There's some talk of Uveltol and even uh, Coco Garb and stuff like that. Mr. Mime preventing that damage could be really nice. The alternative, of course, is that you just play more max potions anyway and be more reasonable against other things in general. I think from there, there's not many, uh, not too many other supporter cards that I'd really consider. Uh, I think we're fairly reasonable here. It's more about counts. As I said, I prefer Stretcher to Super Rod. I quite like adding more max potions, but not at the expense of supporter cards, potentially at the expense of energy cards, if you feel like Ray's not going to be that important or not as big. I mean, you still have four outs to hit those fair energies, but because you're evolving up into Gardevoirs instead of Gallades, you don't have the benefit of Premonition a lot of the time, so you have to physically find those energies. That's why you're playing the extra copy. So that's where we're at with Guardi. Let's jump into some games with it. Uh, I do think it's a pretty cool anti-meta deck right now. I mean, it's the most it's probably the most fun anti-meta deck you can be playing because it's got the cool draw engine of Premonition Instruct. Uh, it just feels cool getting into stage twos in the first place, and it's just really nice to absolutely bop um, Rayquazas and bop Zoroarks. It's a really good feeling, so I feel like there's going to be a handful of Guardi players uh, at Worlds, be it Zoro Guardi or regular Guardi. The benefits of this list is that we're slightly better against Buzzrock and slightly better against Zoroark. Guardi mirrors, I would expect, because Gallade is just even more potent. So that would be my reasoning for playing this list over Zoroguardi. But the benefit of Zoroguardi is just more consistency in general because you're drawing more cards a lot of the time. So bear that in mind. We are up against, looks like, Zoropod that's also playing... Uh, Stand-in Zoroark, so that's something to bear in mind. Stand-in can deal with Gallades if we get careless with our bench. So seeing that early is really nice as a heads up. Uh, they get to go first here, they have Zerua. We have a nice Ultra Ball for Lele for Bridget turn. If they don't uh, parallel us, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Another reason to play our own uh, third copy of Blower is the amount of parallel being around right now. And one of the most interesting decisions is that we don't play Parallel of our own, despite it being a very powerful card, uh, just because I'm so hell-bent on consistency with Stage 2 decks. So, yeah, that's actually a card I should have mentioned as an important potential addition. But there we are. So, we have a really nice turn here. I'm going to be getting rid of 
Kuzma for certain, and probably the other ultra ball here. And we're going to go ahead, grab our Lele for Bridget. We do have those two. We have three red candies in the deck. Two other Gallades, so all of our Gallades are here. All of our Curliers and Rolts are here. Our other Guru is here as well, so that's really nice for us. We have all of our DCs. This is looking pretty good. Not too awkward prizes at all. And you know how I said we got to play around that that uh, non-GX Zoroark? Well, we're still going hell-bent on Rolts here, because Zoroark can still pick those off very easily. And I'm certain that that's going to be what they want to do turn two. So the first thing we're going to do, get a bunch of rolls in play. Because we play two stretcher, I'm not too concerned about getting the other guru down. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, plonk a bunch of rolls into play. And I'm not going to attach because it's just so easy for them. Uh, so we'll just end it there. We can't get instruct value anyway this turn. So really good turn one for us, to be honest. Got the Bridget, had an extra rolls to play as well. The most scary stuff here is a parallel plus Guzma play. Then we're down to two rolls, and it gets a little bit more awkward. They do get into their stand in Zorak straight away, so only one Zoro GX in play. That's going to make it a lot harder for them to have a crazy good turn here, because they can only draw two extra cards. There's a DCE, so they can stand in and get a knockout on the Guru. They're going to play Sycamore as well. Looks like kind of an old school build with the stand in and the Coco. These aren't super standard in Zoroark anymore. Taking these trade. Get rid of a blower. They're one trade. No other Zorua's hit the board either, so this is really nice for us. If we can get this uh, Gallade turn two, it's going to be pretty insane. We currently don't have any Skylars in hand. Uh, we could have kept our other Ultra Ball and had it uh, via another Skylar. That's something to bear in mind. I'm just going to casually evolve the bench here. Can attach active and play N. I think that's really reasonable. So we have five outs for stage twos and four candies. That's pretty insane. We got it. That's nice. We can deal with the only thing that could KO our non-GX Zoro, our uh, Gallade here. So this is going to be really good. We have Premonition Kukui for potentially next turn, as well as other Skylars. Let's have a look at what's on the top of this deck here. Max Potion Stretcher could be nice for our Guru, which is in here. What do we want here? I think we want the, the Stretcher. If we get the treasure, we can actually reset and go for like a max... Uh... I think we're going to stretch her on top. And then we're doing this. Don't forget we are also taking prizes. Or a prize. We'll hold on to choice band. I don't feel like there's a reason to play it. Even the, like playing around N because we're only taking one prize. Um, because this could also be nice for the Gardevoir GX if they are going to attach three energies onto their Glycopod. They promote Coco, puts down as a Rua, likely their top deck because they chose not to play it last turn, or they didn't play it last turn. Second field blower goes in the bin. He comes on the Wimpod. They have some puzzles to play out. Are they going for Guzma DC? Or are they going for Sycamore? Guzma DC seems a little risky. Probably just Sycamore here. Maybe Zerua Sycamore. Ultra Ball DC, okay. So they could be going Lele. Gets rid of an Acerola, which is interesting. Man, if they go Lele attack here, we have our Diancy Choice Band combo to take two more prize cards. Oh boy. 
If I don't play N, this could be insane. Even if I do play N, it's still fine. They're gonna grab Cynthia. Oh, goody. Goody gumdrops. That does surprise me, because they know that we premonitioned. But I'm not gonna complain. They actually find themselves the Glycopod attachment, so they're not going for the Lele attack. So they recovered a DC and then didn't attach it. Interesting. Okay, so. You can go 130, 140, 50, 160, 170, 180, 200. Not quite enough. You can play out a lot of cards, which is nice here. You can play one, two, three, four. Four of our cards, and then Skylar, grab ourselves Max Potion and have the Premonition chance. So let's get the Guru. Let's pop him down. Oh man, we actually can't draw that many because I got the Guru. <laughs> okay, this is still fine. Uh... I think we're just grabbing Max Potion here. Trying to build the board more than anything. There's no reason to attack this Galissapod really, because it'll just heal anyway. So we'll just heal. Even if we get no damage on the Galissapod, I think this is fine. We have the Premonition Oranguru for one card. And putting Guzma to the top is going to be nice, but we don't have a follow-up DCE. So instead we're going to get Treasure and reset this top. I think we can get rid of the uh, Diancy. Because it means we can get another Curlier into play. Which is nice in case he gets a baby Zoroark down again. So we'll sack Diancy, grab our ourselves another Curlier. Make sure that these are online. It's going to be really important. And we'll end it there. Not the best turn, really. Um, but all we need to know is that we can one Hikio Zoroark right? That's the most important thing here. They do have Evo Soda, so they can grab themselves that non-GX Zoroark, which they're going to do. Oh, no, they're going for a GX one. Okay. They're going to blow her away a choice band, which is a little annoying. And they're going to start trading here. So probably looking for DC for a crossing cut turn. If they do crossing cut, that's really good for our Guardi GX, of course. They're going to floatstone the active. And they're playing N, giving us more cards, which is always appreciated. Wow, big draws. The ultra balling. Looks like they're trying to find another Glycopod. Got rid of a puzzle in the process. That doesn't seem worth it. I guess they are important in this matchup to attack with. I guess this is the only way he can get damage. Yeah, gonna hit us for 120. Okay, let's do this. So, we can premonition once, see if there's a Guzma in there. If there is, we can just play the field blower and grab the one copy Guzma. Uh, and if there isn't, we can ultra ball. Okay, and try a second time. Okay, so there's Guzma, which is nice. Uh, these are actually all really good cards. Instruct for one for our Guzma. Hit 
have our second premonition just to see what else we want really so we have an ultra ball anyway next turn so do I just want uh, with ultra ball we are taking two prizes though so bear that in mind I think we'll just put the sycamore to the top I think it's just the safest play We can Ultra Ball away some of these prize cards, get a Gallade out, and it feels pretty good when we have another DCE that we're drawing into. Those are some nice candidates for an Ultra Ball. So now just with the sad one trade, let's see if they can hit... Really, they want to hit DCE this turn so they can GX and deal with this Gallade. Otherwise, they're going to be in a bit of trouble. They do hit an E-Hammer, which is potentially going to slow us down here. I feel like it's a good turn to, uh, oh, they are going to Gizmer up our Gallade, okay. Might be a good turn for us to Twilight, actually, this turn. If we can't, I'm going to put this Guardi up. If we can't find ourselves Guzma, it could be a really good turn to, uh, to Twilight. We're going to Ultra Ball, grab ourselves Gallade, of course. Make sure we keep having an army of these. That's Premonition. There is a Guzma. No, you know, we're gonna twilight this. Spring to our guardy, attach a DC to a Gallade. We'll be getting another premonition in here. This feels fine. And it feels like a really nice uh, Twilight turn. We have a Guzma for next turn now. And uh, we have a Skylar as well, if we want to max potion our Guardi. So we're just going to Twilight. We're going to put this back. We're going to put our Guzmas back. DCU's back. I think our choice band might be important. Uh, we have stretches for all these targets. I think we're just going to do supports at this point. Oh, it's hard to get that within the time. <laughs> we just about did it. And we'll see what the opponent can do now. Our board state is pretty ideal. A parallel is a little annoying because an Oranguru has to go. But it's going to be a very difficult four prize cards for them. They do have a rescue stretcher. They have their one trade after that stretcher. They do hit DCE and choice band. Feels good. And they're going for crossing cut, which is really weird because it means that we can uh Our Gallades are always safe now. So here's what we're going to do here. And do this. Going to deal with their Zoroark. 
now that they've uh oops. now that they've done the whole oops what are we doing premonition first now that they've done their gx attack there's no reason not to we'll play the only insta play card that we can see here <laughs> do this, we'll put this down, we'll use our other premonition to hope to see a better card here. Guzmer is game for us currently, so we might as well put that there. Even though we can draw two cards, I want to keep the choice band for options in case they're doing some parallel stuff. Going down to one prize, they can't respond on this Gallade. They've already GX'd, so our Lele's not in any danger of being knocked out if they are going to try and Guzma up the Guardi. But they have no hand to play with. They actually grab themselves a Lele either off the well, off the top or already had it. And they're going to grab N. Anything that's down to one, we have double Instruct, double Prem though. And they're just going to armor press. So let's see if Guzma is in here. Guzma's not in here, nor is any shuffling cards. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 10. So I need to... Spring to the Guardi. Play the N. Uh, because we can auto play the Fair Energy, we'll instruct two first and then have the Premonition final dig. DC choice band? DC, that's not enough, right? Because he crossing cut. Three, oh, sorry, he. Uh, what's it called? Armor pressed. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 2, 10, but he's reducing 20. So Guzma's still game for us. So let's just grab these cards on the Coco. So let's continue to build the Guardi. Draw one card because it's a DC and a Guzma anyway. And I'm happy to just hit this. Feels like we're just closing the jaws on him now. Here comes a Guzma. Guzma isn't N, so as long as he doesn't parallel away both Coco and Glissopod. We have game. Well, there's Max Potion. Now he just needs to parallel the Coco. No. Not possible. So we can take our last prize pretty casually here. And you can see how much of a pain Gallade is to deal with. It's actually way easier. Like, Zoro Pod is actually probably harder than Zoro Control, I would say. So, uh, that's nice. Nice win against one of the more difficult Zoro matchups. I think Zoro Rock's probably the hardest. Zoro Pod is also quite difficult. 
on the scale of how annoying Zoroark decks are. Zoro Garb can always just have these, like, turn to lock, haha, you have nothing games. But when we play three, Skylar, two, Blower, doesn't feel like it should happen that much. Let's get another game in with this deck. I saw another dark Pokemon, so maybe this is Zoro Lock or Zoro Garb. We'll have to see. We start with Guru and we actually don't have an out to Bridget. We have 10 outs for turn one Bridget. So this is going to be a shame if we don't get one off the top. And it looks like they are Zoro Garb. They have Bridget, no problem. Now if we did get a means to Bridget, like we have Candy Guardy, so that would be an okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane, I was about to say. And it is insane. Now, before you all get angry and get on your keyboards, remember we do have 10 outs. So we have more outs than standard Gardevoirs. So put your pitchforks away for a moment. If you can help it. Let's see what they can do. Not really scared of too much. We're not even that scared of a uh, of a garb coming down. To be honest, we have a really nice hand to combat that. Um, we'd much prefer this candy to be into a Gallade than a Guardi, but you take the candies where you can. Guardi is still important in this matchup for certain, even if it is just for twilighting. Would be a little nervous of a uh, parallel lock plus Guzma play on a Ralts, but we already have the stretcher anyway, so we're not scared of much, to be honest. If they do take a knockout, we can actually draw a card with Instruct if they don't lock us out. Here comes a second Zorowak, so they're getting their engine rolling. Getting rid of their resource management guru. Not always seen in guard builds, but now that there's Zoro control, it's always nice for the Zoro lock players to also recover some important pieces. Especially because you can garb lock them and parallel. Potentially you get multiple uses of the resource management while they're doing nothing. It's a nice addition to the deck. It's a nice adjustment, I guess. They're actually going to evolve into Trash Lance early and just pass it over, so... No aggression being shown from them is really good for us. We can go straight to Guardi, which we will. And it feels like a really nice uh, Sycamore here. <clears throat> feels very reasonable. Give us the highest odds of trying to get more candies rolling. Oh my good gracious. And they are indeed rolling. We have Guzma for next turn, if we can just put an energy on top. Can't put an energy on top, but we can put another candy on, which is super tempting. If the Ralts gets KO'd, we can stretch her anyway. But we'll be left with not much. Two, three, we can still play out three cards and have one Premonition Instruct with Guzma to try and have another pop getting a DC out. If we get take the Ultra Ball, it means we don't get another Gallade out, which is already the reason why I'm not wanting to do it. It does let us reset, though. Because at the moment we don't have high odds to uh, get an energy, even with double Instructor Runeo. We want to Instruct into these Ultra Balls so we can get rid of them and reset our... Uh, are outs so two stage twos really nice I'm gonna hold the guru right now just because it can only be punished by parallel and we're already holding blower so feels good right now 
Garbador so far doing uh, 120 to our Gallade, knocking out Rolts, not quite doing enough for the Guru, just doing half. And they're going to start their trades to begin their turn. They're going to blur away our choice band, really not that important right now. And they're going to play N, which is also fine for us. Seeing as we didn't have the DC Guzma combo, and it would actually have been difficult for us next turn. That's absolutely fine. Now we have the combo, if we don't get paralleled. And it means our... Uh, our Guru is staying around. Oh my god, it's beautiful. So, we're going to go Curlia. We're gonna go Glade. Two, four, six, eight. So 160 does respond on this Glade. So we're probably gonna Ultra Ball out another Ralts here. But dealing with the Zorak feels nice. They don't have any Trubbishes threatening Ability Lock, which is also really nice. We can get the Premonition in right now to try and get another Gallade, which we immediately do, which is insane. Footstone's also nice. All looking very good. So we have a response on his Garbodor if he's able to respond on our Gallade. So we'll be continuing to churn out prizes. All looking pretty good for us right now. I think the scariest thing is if he plays Delinquent, to be honest. But even then, we're taking two prizes, so we can just get rid of the Skylar. Yeah, we're not really scared of much. Going good. Gallade is good at knocking out Zoroarks. That's all we've learned so far. <laughs> but that's what we're hoping for for Worlds, right? That's what we're after. Bear in mind, the Garbador is a threat. 2, 4, 6, 8, 160. They only play three Psychic Energy normally, or three units, or some combination of those. One's already in the bin. They have two trades to try and find it, alongside any other supporters. Zoro Garb typically doesn't play Mallow. They are going to Lele down here, though. Potentially it's a follow-up N. That's the threat of permanent. Oh, they are going delinquent. That's fine. E hammer. So they can't get the knockout. That's insane. So good for us. Oh, and they actually just go for Cynthia instead. Okay, so they're choosing to hope to hit the psychic rather than try and delinquent us down. One more trade. Do they hit the Psychic or Puzzles? Hit Parallel. Uh, can't be Guardy here, it's just got to be Rolts, right? They do have Puzzles. If they can get another Trubbish down, it's a threatening turn. If they can't, we're actually okay. Because sure, they can deal with this Gallade, but if they can't get another Trubbish down, it doesn't matter anyway, because they can't get the next Gallade. We're probably Skylaring out a Stretcher here. Or we could be even more defensive and just Twilight next turn. We are very far ahead. Trash Launch goes from a huge threat to not a threat at all if we do go for the Twilight this turn. I'm quite happy to Twilight, I think. We'll spring it. We will Skylar Stretcher. Stretch it just to get an immediate Rolt, so I think it's fine when we're about to uh, recycle anyway. Pressure. 
Prem and Ish. Well, energy cards seems good. No Guzma, unfortunately. Oh, it actually really doesn't matter. Uh, let's attach, because we know we're getting another... Another couple of energies. Actually, so this is the perfect instruct. Genius. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do I want N back over Skylar? I think I want one N back. Nice, nice. So they have a turn to get some initiative, either dealing with a Rolts or dealing with a Gallade. Well, they can't deal with Gallade, so it would have to be dealing with a Rolts or putting some damage on Guardi. Garbador itself is not doing enough damage, so they probably have to do it with something else. They're choosing to get rid of Delinquent, which is very interesting. Obviously, we have Premonition Oranguru anyway. So they're looking to do something else. They also just got rid of a Guzma, so I don't know what their ideal turn is here. Having just got rid of Delinquent and Guzma, which would be what I would imagine would be what they go for in a normal world. Something we didn't do with our Instruct was play around the uh, Delinquent. So yeah, they are just going to get rid of Rolts here. But they're threatening a Zoroark. And if they can't get a Trubbish down, it's going to be real bad for them. It's going to go real downhill. Yeah, just a Riotous Beating. So here we go, spring to ourselves, have to be a little careful about two, four, six, so we can only play one item this turn, so it'll be stretcher. Double stretch are putting in a lot of work in these games. So important to just keep swarming these because they are our only attackers. Premonition instructing for an N is probably our best move here. Oh, hey. Hello, best move. I think I'll take it. Because they're going down to four cards and only have one trade available. Oh yeah, we can't end. <laughs> We've already played a supporter. It'll be good for later. <laughs> that's actually really bad for me, but that's fine. I think we're in such a commanding position at this point. Max Potion hasn't been relevant. But could have been. Guardi actually is starting to grow up all on its own. So realistically, I should have put a Guzma to the top instead of the end that I put to the top. Yeah. They're going to trade for once. That's all they can muster. They're going to rescue Stretcher. Three targets back, a Zoroark line and a Guru. Gonna play Bridget for their supporter. They're gonna DC and go for Acid Spray. Not enough, but could get rid of our DC, of course. Not able to. 
then we just have Guzma. We put it per in the perfect place. What was I talking about? Of course we did. Right? Easy. Nice. So that's two Zoroark decks down. Now, I've been to Worlds before. And I've played decks that are anti-meta. And I've played against a lot of stuff that isn't what I expect. So, <laughs> although we're seeing this absolutely wail on Zoroark players, just be warned, <laughs> there are other decks out there. And if it's Worlds, people will bring them. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the only concern about playing Guardi, really. But I think this list... We're demonstrating the power of Skylar. We're demonstrating the... Reason why we're going heavy on the Glade. Reducing the energy count is a big reason why we're a lot more consistent. And having the mindset of an anti-meta deck has made this build a lot smoother, I think. Rather than being stuck in the past of old Guardi, wanting to play 7 Fairy, 4 DCE, trying to build big Guardi for game. It's just not what we need these days. So... A good demonstration of the patient approach as well in that matchup where we chose to uh, chose to Twilight. This is how we're up against a Weavile deck. Maybe a spread build. Now we only play one max potion. So that's something to bear in mind. They can sneaky smash away any attachment we do this turn. And we do want to still bridge it, I'm pretty sure. Um, our deck is very ability reliant. Super ability reliant. Ah, oh, man. Okay. I mean, in some worlds, we just go Rolts, Ultra Ball for Rolts. Play the Guru and play Cynthia. That could be the world we're living in, actually. Give us better odds for the candy. Could get rid of two fairies here, because I don't think Guardi's going to be amazing this game, but Glade also has an ability. It's one of these really weird matchups. You know, I mentioned Mr. Mime. Yeah, Mr. Mime could be cool. We'll do the manual Bridget. The poor man's Bridget. Uh, I could still get an attachment in, even if they can just sneaky smash it away. I think it gives us an extra card, so that's reasonable. Skull is one piece, but it's not both pieces of a stage two. So we'll Cynthia away. That looks like a really nice hand. We have the stretch of Gallade. Cool. Guru, Guardi, Gallade. Everything is weak to this uh, rule of evil uh, Weavile that they can come up with. But these spread decks are typically a little inconsistent. So we're hoping we can prey on that aspect. Looks like it's actually a Uveltar build. Uveltal Weavile. Which will actually be good for us because it preys even more on that inconsistency thing that we were talking about. Hopefully. They choose to spend an attachment to Sneaky Smash a Fairy as well, which is actually really good for us because building up a Uveltal is much scarier. Much scarier, I think. They're going to Ultra Ball. Getting another Uveltal down. We do play Kukui, which is going to be important for dealing with these Uveltals. We also play Diancy, of course, so... A, uh... Oh, okay, they're just going to go for this. A regular Glade with a Diancy can KO baby Uveltals, and with a Kukui we can actually deal with a, uh... Deal with a big one, right? So, let's do this. Get ourselves Galahad. 
get him out straight away. Get ourselves cut here. He is very surprised by this for some reason. We're doing this, grabbing ourselves that Diancy. Another ability Pokemon, huh? Okay. Let's see. This is all horrible. I guess I played these two cards out. Because we're not guaranteed to draw cards after the Cynthia. And we've already premonitioned, so it just makes sense to get two wins to play cards out. Much better for us to just hold Curliers in this matchup than just evolve them straight into stage twos anyway, so that's something to bear in mind. Uh, that's a shame. It's a real shame. No DCE. It's a let off for the Veltol. And a problem for us. we got to keep attaching to the Curlier now because we may have to move this Gallade out of the way. Hope to max potion it. I'm going to try and get a lot of value out of that one max potion that we play. Again, reason to play two. Something that we discussed. I feel like I may have overbenched as well. Okay, they have Guzma. This is absolutely fine. I think they're just trying to get damage on the board for a... Uh, Before the Evil Toll breaks. Another Gallade. Really awkward. I want to evolve this into a Guardi, obviously. Evolving into more stuff with abilities also sounds terrible, so this Gallade may be a trap. I feel like we're not evolving this. Just too many damage counters for Rule of Evil. Oh, this sucks. Not enough cards to play down our hand either. Oh, that's so gross. I guess that's the downside of playing 15 supporters. Not even any energy in the top, either. Absolutely grim. Here's the downside of seeing only 9 energy. So the question now is, do we start attacking and putting this Gardevoir in danger? Do I retreat into anything either? I guess I don't retreat. Hmm. Really gross. Looks like this is going to be our undoing. A slow start against this deck feels really bad. We've had to bench a lot, giving them a lot of time to spread a bit of damage around. If we can sit there with one or two stage twos just pumping their one prizes each turn, it's not a problem, but we've given them time, built our board. All sounds very awkward. Can't do much with our hand either. Elixir whiffs. There's the attachment. Dance Blade taking the first prize of the game. Okay. Let's put another Ralts in play. We're going to need them. Haven't seen any Cocos or anything like that just yet, so... 
That seems good. I think it's just Skylar for Blower, to be honest. We have the knockout on the Siveltal. We don't need to end just yet. If he wants to do more Guzma plays, that seems fine. Let's just do this. We do have our max potion, that's something to bear in mind. Really important, actually. Get rid of these. We'll evolve into our fourth ability Pokemon against a Weavile deck. Not that we're counting. <laughs> uh, let's get our premonition. Max Potion sounds amazing. Let's deal with the first Yveltal. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. <sighs> Very scary matchup without Mr. Mime and only one max potion. We could be a lot better against this matchup. But I also feel we've given it the luxury of time to make it look a lot better than it is. Not that it's bad, it just looks a lot better with more time on its hands. Stretching back more Yveltal pieces, the army of Yveltals. There's a Sycamore. They have to commit this Sneasel to be active. They have to get a Weavile out. They've played two Ultra Balls. There's a Dark Energy being attached. Another Max Elixir. This one hits. There's the third Ultra Ball. Getting rid of that Yveltal they just put back in. There's the Rule of Evil Weavile. Try saying that ten times fast. And lots of damage is now on our board. One fifty with resist. Okay. I'm gonna heal delayed. It's our most damaged Pokemon if they're going to do spread stuff, and we need to deal with this Weavile instantly. We draw into a lot more unplayables. At least we finally find our Sycamore to start bidding some of these unplayables. DC seems good, Guzma seems good. Both blowers are in our discard pile, and our... Max Potion, but I don't think we're going to get the luxury of time to use our GX attack against this deck. There's another Guardi though, potentially the second Guardi will be the one that gets our, uh, our GX attack going. There's another 10, so the Yveltal break can actually KO this. It does 120, 150 with Choice Band, down to 130 with Resist, but the Shrine Tick will deal with us. So if you can find Choice Band, we're in really bad shape. Two have been played. Typically this deck plays three or four. It's actually one I'll be profiling later on. Here comes your Veltal Break. Boom, there it is. And a Cynthia. Digging for that choice band, no doubt. They have another rule of evil on the board. And there's the Baleful Knight. Without the thingamajigger, which is huge. So it means we can KO this at the very least. 
Yes, we want fewer cards. Looking very sketchy. I'm going to spring to a rot here. Got to deal with this. Oh, I put the scanner on top so we could get an Ultra Ball, so we could get a Guardi. But we just get gifted it anyway. So this Weavile can take four prizes, or the Veltal can take four prizes here. Whichever way he wants to do it. Stretching back break, no doubt, here to make this a lot safer. All, all that, okay. What's our win con at this point? Are they running out of energy cards? Seven, eight, nine, ten energy gone. They've got to play more than ten, right? Another Sneasel comes down. Yeah, that's big. So annoyed that we put the Skylar on top after getting an Ultra Ball of Prizes. What can I Skylar? Skylar Max Potion to not lose to Guzma. Yeah. Oh no, we played Max Potion. What am I saying? Skylar. Question mark, so we can do question mark. Skylar Stretcher for Guru, so I can in Premonition and do stuff. Can't even do that. No, they got us here. difficult matchup, but I feel like this is a very interesting build of this list that we're up against. Doesn't feel like a standard build. Baby Veltal. Very dangerous though. Rule of Evil, no doubt. A dangerous card. Or just Twilight. Maybe in some world they don't have Guzma. Guzma energy. Maybe. I 
Second Weavile coming down is worrisome. There's energy. Choice band, sure. This is free retreat, broken. Oh, they didn't actually win. Incredible. But we have absolutely nought to stop them winning, right? We need to... We need to stall them somehow and just hope that they have both their Guzmas prized, I guess. We can attack because we're not getting the knockout thanks to resist. We do lose to Acerola, but I'm not going to play around that in this list. Maybe there's a world where they only play two Guzma and not enough energy to retreat. Maybe. Possible. And none of these cards help us. We lose to pretty much anything. Oh, it can only heal from itself, and it's a psychic energy. Rip. Okay. I'm going to try and re roll. The, the max potion, because we're running out of time. <clears throat> and we'll see if they can win. Be hilarious if they can't. If they play 11 energy and Two Guzma. <laughs> I can't see it being the case though. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh wow, okay, not dead yet. Oh my god, that's so terrible. We lose, right? I lose just to being hit by Oblivion Wing in every situation. This goes down to 30, gets hit for 10, and actually lives. My god. So now they also need to not have choice band. Here's receiver, if they can get. Oh, well, we don't see, uh, don't see Guzma. They're just gonna play the end. Sad face, oh my God. <laughs> no way. No way. There's just no way. <laughs> now let's be reasonable here and say that we still lose to a lot of things, but this is funny at the very least. We need to get one of these field blowers. We need to survive five turns. We need this deck to have no dark energy and no 
Guzma. Choice Man lets him chip away a bit, but not really. Not enough for us to be in danger. Guardia is our best thing to have active. Thanks to resistance. Another shrine, okay. Everything has all the energy cards. You have 150 left. Getting hit for 30 a turn, yeah. It's no, no point in us putting down like a guru and trying. Are one of these last two cards Dark or Guzma? No? <laughs> oh! <laughs> we have one turn. Let's see if they can beat us. Good luck, team. Good luck. No Guzma, no Dark. Or DC, or counter energy, or switch, float stone. Stretch it keeps them alive! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! They only have two Pokemon? Oh my god, this is going down to the wire. So they, they can't win, right? They don't have enough turns to win. We got him. We got him. Crazy. So crazy. Well, we played to our outs. And the out was that he probably prized his last Guzma. I guess. I can't imagine a deck playing any two. Even though it's a spread build. Whew. We got there. We got there. So that's Guardi. Uh, I think we demonstrated a lot there. A lot of how to beat Zorowark up. And the fact that <laughs> you told told Weavile is a horrible matchup if you don't play Mime. But we found a way to win anyway, so that's always fun. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think about this list. Uh, the Skylar engine's awesome. I would love a second max potion. It wasn't too relevant against the uh, Zoroark players, though, so bear that in mind. And yeah, that's going to be all for today. Uh, more Worlds lists for the next couple of days until I fly out to Nashville myself. So see you all there, and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.